Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to read to you the uh, poem I Have Visited Again by Alexander Pushkin. Um, I'm going to include the text on your OneNote page as well, but I know that when we did the Blake poem, some of you may have struggled with them, and they're pretty easy poems. Sometimes it helps to have someone read it and go through it like we did in class. So I'm going to do that for you. Uh, I'll stop frequently and discuss some of the stuff that's in it as well, and I kind of give you a feel for what this poem's about, because these poems are definitely a little more difficult than the Blake poems that we did before, and so I'd like to be able to offer you some help as you go through your questions for these, okay? So let me give you some of the background that's found here about this poem first. It says, initially, Pushkin found the inspiration to write in the politics of his homeland. His rebellious writings, as well as his unruly behavior, resulted in banishment to his family estate. Such a personality seems distantly related to the speaker of the gentle words and the images in I Have Visited Again. In this poem, the speaker revisits the estate to find that time and nature have hardly stood still in the intervening years. So what we're dealing with here is a guy coming back to some an area he spent some really formidable years. Uh, he leaves, he comes back about a decade later and uh, sees how everything's changed. So really useful poem, really powerful poem, really not that much to interpret, to be honest with you. The language itself is pretty plain. So let's read it. Um, again, I'll stop. I'll try to stop at the ends of stanzas, but I'm not sure exactly uh, what your version is going to look like. So we'll see. All right. It says, I have visited again that corner of the earth where I spent two unnoticed exiled years. Ten years have passed since then, and many things have changed for me, and I have changed too, obedient to life's law. But now that I am here again, the past has flown out eagerly to embrace me, claim me, and it seems that only yesterday I wandered within these groves. So that's our first stanza. Um, you know, like I said, he's come back. He spent two years in this area. He's come back 10 years later and realizes that he's changed, uh, but so has the land around him. And that's really what we're dealing with, this comparison of changing yourself versus external changes around you. And, uh, you know, how that can be uh, a really reflective time for us okay we'll read a couple more stanzas it says here's the cottage sadly declined now where i lived with my poor old nurse she is no more no more behind the wall do i hear her heavy footsteps as she moved slowly painstakingly about her tasks here are the wooded slopes where often i sat motionless and looked down at the lake recalling other shores and other waves it gleams between golden cornfields and green meadows, a wide expanse. Across its fathomless waters, a fisherman passes, dragging an ancient net. Along the shelving banks, hamlets are scattered. Behind them, the mill, so crooked as it can scarcely make its sails turn to the wind. So we get, you know, two landmarks there. You know, we got the cottage and then uh, the, you know, wooded slopes where he would spend time. Again, nature, it's really easy to see as time passes. It alters greatly, but the thing is, and what, Pushkin's trying to show us is how much we also change in this time period, how we're not the same. Uh, in fact, we're drastically different than the person we were. Uh, he wrote this at a young, fairly young age, and so you guys will realize this too. If you think back to being a middle schooler, think about how different you are now from how you were then. And trust me, hopefully it's a pretty big difference, as most middle schoolers are quite odd. So, um, uh, you know, this is detailing, giving you a physical description of an internal condition. You know, that's a good way to put it. All right, we're going to finish it out. It says, on the bounds of the, my ancient ancestral, uh, sorry, let's restart that. On the bounds of my ancestral acres, at the spot where a road scarred by many rainfalls climbs the hill, three pine trees stand, one by itself, the others close together. When I rode on horseback past them in the moonlit night, the friendly rustling murmur of their crowns would welcome me. Now I have ridden out upon that road and seen those trees again. They have remained the same, make the same murmur, but round their aging roots where all before was barren, naked, a thicket of young pines has sprouted, like green children round the shadows of the two neighboring pines. But in the distance their solitary comrade stands, morose, like some old bachelor, and round its roots all as barren as before. I'll greet you, young and unknown tribe of pine trees. I'll not see your mighty upward thrust of years to come when you will overtop these friends of mine and shield their ancient summits from the gaze of passers-by. But may my grandson hear your welcoming murmur when, returning home from lively company and filled with gay and pleasant thoughts, he passes you in the night and thinks perhaps of me. Okay, so uh, actually a really beautiful poem. He has this image in these last two stanzas of viewing these three trees that he saw when they were little. Uh, and now as he's come back 10 years later, they've grown. And while they're still similar, you know, you have two together and one by itself. Um, they're also different in some way. And he points out, and this, this is where you get a little bit of metaphor and there's a little bit more depth. He points out that the two trees that stood together, now there's a whole bunch of baby pine trees beneath them. 
and the one that was by itself, there's none there. Now, I don't know. I'm not a Pushkin expert or anything like that. I don't know much about his past, but I can tell you that this is definitely speaking. A person who lived through exile and all the things he did, he probably had a difficult time with relationships. And so this would be a really good comparison of, you know, what it's like to grow old alone. Um, and, you know, but then he ends on a really beautiful image of maybe having some of his, you know, grandchildren, I believe it was. Yeah, his grandson come back years later and see how much things have changed even then. So you get this image of time going on and on and on, even though we don't. Uh, a really beautiful poem. Uh, it's not one of his more uh, contentious poems, not a lot of the rebellious nature of who he is in here. You do get a reference to his exile, but that's about it. But the key here, and what I want you guys to think about as we go into our questions later, is this idea about can, this old famous phrase about you can't, you know, you can't go home again. Um, as you're getting ready to get out on your own, you're about to go off to college or enter the workforce or the military for some of you, uh, everything's going to be different from that moment on. And you can never recapture these moments. And we want to think about that and talk about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, and just what it means, whether it's neither of the two, it's just the way it is. So, uh, all right, we're going to come back in a minute. I'm going to find a good Baudelaire poem to read to you, and we're going to study that, and then that will be the end of this section. So I hope you guys are having a, a decent time sitting around the house. I hope you're all safe, and uh, I will be back with you pretty soon.